Hello, and welcome to XK Tech Reviews. My name is Chris, and today I'm going to show you how to get PCI Express Base flash storage speeds for under $150. Uh, barely. So before we go any further, let me say that this setup is not for everybody. Before I started, I was running my computer off of a 128 gigabyte solid state drive, which was pretty fast. But I've been watching a few too many YouTube videos and I wanted some storage that was a little bit faster. Uh, I didn't really see the point in spending well over $200 just for 250 gigs of PCI Express based storage. So I was looking through Amazon and Newegg, and I found on Amazon these little uh, Kingston, or no wait, they're not Kingston, they're Patriot Torch solid state drives. Now this is only uh, 60 gigabytes of storage space, but I did buy four of them, and I put them in these little uh, 3.5 inch to 2.5 inch converter bays, which holds two 2.5 inch drives each. So why did I buy five, uh, four? four solid state drives. Well, in RAID 0, as you probably know, both the storage space and the speeds stack. So we have four 60 gigabyte drives, which comes out to 240 gigabytes of storage space. These are also solid state drives, so they're pretty fast. So when we put four solid state drives in RAID 0, what do we come up with? Well, these are not the fastest solid state drives out there. They have 520 megabyte per second read speeds and 430 megabyte per second write speeds, but I didn't actually see that. Um, this was the speeds I were seeing on my computer. I don't know if that was due to these drives or more likely my motherboard and system build. So as you can see, I was getting about 382 megabyte per second read speeds and 144 megabyte per second write speeds. However, when I set these up through my motherboard in a fake RAID, I got 1200 megabyte per second sequential read speeds and 716 megabyte per second write speeds. Um, that's not the fastest thing in the world and it's not a true quadrupling of speeds, but the results are really not all that bad. Um, if you want some real life benches, my system is an AMD 8370 octa-core that's running on a Gigabyte GA990FXA-UD3 Revision 4 motherboard. Um, I have 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance uh, 800 MHz RAM and I use the built-in RAID controller from Marvel that sits on my Gigabyte motherboard. Um, Audition or Adobe Audition, the sound editing program, actually has a build in startup speed indicator for some weird reason. So that was the most accurate speed result that I got, and that started in a lightning fast 1.77 seconds. Um, Lightroom Creative Cloud 2015 with 24 megapixel RAWs to load, loaded in 7.5 seconds. Premiere Pro started in 6.75 seconds, and Photoshop CC started in 6 seconds flat. Now, um, that's, that's really aren't that bad of speeds, but there's one thing that you have to remember, which this is a RAID 0 array, and that is a non-redundant array, which means that if one of these drives fails on me, I'm going to lose all of the data on, these, on this particular array. So what I've done is I have a couple two terabyte drives in my system that will be performing constant backups from our, not constant, but daily or so backups from my main drive. And that way, if one of these drives do go out on me, I will have a backup. So now let's look at some cost scaling. I spent about $148 for 240 gigs of storage. That comes out to about 62 cent per gigabyte. Um, the cheapest PCI Express drive I could find on Amazon or Newegg was the Kingston HyperX Predator 240 gig drive for $204, and that works out to about $0.85 cent per gig, while the M.2 version of that drive works out to about $0.81 cent per gig, but of course that requires you to have an M.2 socket on your motherboard or your laptop. 
And if you're ever confused about M.2 compatibility, check out our M.2 compatibility video here. Uh, scaling these numbers though really shows where the hardware ride could shine, at least for now. A single Samsung 850 Pro hard drive, uh, the 500, no, yeah. The 500 gigabyte version comes out to about $215 on Amazon. Now that has 100 megabyte per second and 20 megabyte per second faster read and write speeds than these 60 gig Patriot drives that I got. That scales to two terabytes of storage for $860. That's 42 cent per gig. Now that's a lot of money, but the equivalent PCI Express storage costs about 20 $250 on uh, Newegg and about $3,000 on Amazon. That's well over a dollar per gig. So what sort of conclusion could we draw from this? Well, in very specific use cases, I'd say that this is a pretty good option. If you're a content creator on a budget and you want some fast storage that you wouldn't have to sell your firstborn child for, well, this might fit the bill. But keep in mind, and I can't stress enough, that this is non-redundant storage. So if one of these drives in the uh, four drive array goes out, then hey, you are out the entire array and any data that wasn't backed up, you're going to lose. But if you're willing to live with having to rebuild your system if one of these drives fails and just have some backups to some larger and cheaper but slower hard disk drives every now and then, then this is a pretty good option to get some fairly fast storage for not a whole lot of money. So if you like this video, click the like button. If you didn't like this video, then I'll just quietly cry in my sleep tonight. Uh, but no, for real, if you didn't like this video, click the thumbs down. Just promise me you'll leave a comment to tell us why. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris from XK Tech Reviews.